Hey, hello everybody. Thanks for coming to our session. Um, yeah, apologies that I can't be there uh, in person, but uh, I'm so thankful that I can still zoom in, you know, to share with all of you. So yeah, looking at this picture, uh, I'm sure for those of us who live in urban settings, this is probably a very common sight, right? And uh, no matter where we go in the world, we will find city folk staring at their phones. And if you look at the red arrows in these photos, they point out the people who are wearing earphones, which means that most likely they are watching online videos. But how did we get here? What advances in technology have allowed us to watch videos anytime and anywhere we like, even while on the move in public transport? Let me describe the technological progress from a personal angle. When I was a child, we already had color televisions. I used to watch animations or cartoons screened by the TV station. As a teenager, I followed the locally produced historical drama, The Awakening. It awakened my understanding of Singapore history, which had previously been just words on the pages of my textbook. I also watched foreign films and would proofread the English subtitles in my head. <laughs> Going to the cinema was less common and rather expensive in my younger days. I remember with fondness my parents bringing us to the most posh cinema at the time to watch The Sound of Music. As ticket prices became gradually more affordable, I frequented the cinemas a lot more. However, in my mid-twenties, I got put off the big screen after the trauma of sitting through the vividly gory scenes in Seven. I visited the cinemas much less after that. Thankfully, I could continue watching movies on the small screen at home through video recordings. My mother used to rent videotapes and we would chase after all the latest episodes of her favorite Cantonese series. The term binge watching wasn't in existence yet, but that's what we were doing. Later on, I would also borrow VCDs and DVDs for free from the National Library. For my 19th birthday, I even invited friends over for a movie marathon where we watched a string of Hollywood classics continuously for 24 hours. Wow. <laughs> the onset of video streaming on the internet opened wide the doors for me to explore many more film genres, which led to a love for Bollywood movies. Mm. I especially enjoy those that tackle difficult issues like class or racial discrimination and reconciliation of political or ethnic divides. Japanese and Korean drama also became much more accessible. Sometimes I would treat myself by watching adaptations of manga or anime or Korean remakes of Japanese drama and have fun dissecting and comparing the different versions. What is the reason behind this fascination with film and video? of multiple genres and languages, not just for me, but also for millions of people all around the world. I would like to attribute it to the power of stories. We are drawn to narratives from young through stories told by our parents and grandparents, and later on through other media that we consume. Do you recognize this iconic scene? 
from Singing in the Rain? We want to know why Gene Kelly was singing and dancing in the rain, even though he had an umbrella. <laughs> Did he fall sick after getting soaked in the rain? These and many other questions running through our minds lead to an unquenchable thirst for stories. You probably know that the bulk of the Bible is made up of stories. They are also found in nearly every culture and told in many ways. At least two-thirds of the world population are oral communicators who learn best through oral methods like listening to stories and songs and watching drama or dance. And all these forms of communication are found in digital media on the internet. So when we combine the power of storytelling with the effectiveness of oral communication methods in digital media, we have a potent tool for the gospel. For instance, I had read stories about Jesus as a child, but it was only when I saw the Jesus film on the big screen that I thought this Jesus could be a real person. Now, the same film is available in over a thousand languages and can be delivered on a phone anywhere in the world at any time through the Jesus Film Project website, the YouTube channel, or the Jesus Film app. I'd like to suggest three levels of engagement that we could adopt in tapping online digital media to tell stories. Firstly, we could approach it as a learner. I watched the K-drama, Our Blues, which was filmed on Jeju Island in order to prepare for a trip there earlier this year, as it features local landmarks, cuisine, and daily life. However, we can learn much more than just these outward aspects of culture. Through anime like Spirited Away, we get to visualize the animistic worldview of the Japanese people. And K-drama such as The Greatest Marriage shows us the high value placed on Confucian practices like ancestral worship in Korea. In Grave of the Fireflies, we get a sense of the anti-war sentiments held by the Japanese. The uproar caused by the pro-Japanese stance of Mr. Sunshine reveals the strong resentment Koreans still bear against their former occupiers. And the internationally beloved K-drama Crash Landing on You underscores a yearning for reunification. The sexualization of children and youth prevalent in Japanese and Korean popular culture and the pressures faced by youth from academic ranking and rivalry in other achievements are exposed in many anime and K-drama. At the next level of being a user, I'm proposing the following categories as outlined by Van Hooser in Everyday Theology. We need to be cultural analysts who understand the times and point out the dissonance between our fallen world and God's glorious blueprint. This could be done through interacting with those who are fans of specific genres of digital media, such as anime and K-drama. Recently, an avid Singaporean photographer in his late 60s was describing to me how he had struck up a conversation with a young cosplayer in Japan by taking photos of her. Cosplay 
in case anyone is not aware, refers to role-playing of characters from anime, manga, and video games with elaborate makeup, costumes, accessories, and props. Such engagement can be cross-cultural as well as intergenerational too. And virtual means of contact could even enable Christians to minister to hikikomori, a Japanese term for social recluse. Although their doors are literally closed to conventional face-to-face -face outreach methods, they often take part in online discussion forums about their favorite anime or K-drama series. Take, for example, one of my sons. He had been playing a narrative multiplayer online role-playing game, which has a chat function. Over time, he made friends with players from Japan with the help of Google Translate. Through identifying with characters in the story, they started to share about how they were struggling with various mental health issues in real life, and he began counseling them. We could look for redemptive narratives, which offer an alternative to the demanding expectations placed on students in real life, for example, or illustrate how girls could overcome body image issues with support from friends. Topics like natural disasters or disease and death in anime and K-drama allow us to point to the someone who shares in our suffering. There are also plenty of films and drama with self-sacrificial Christ-like figures that could be used to introduce the one true savior. Finally, we could be producers of digital media that speak into deep yearnings for love, truth, meaning, or purpose, and offer glimpses of something altogether more positive. We should take care that our storylines are neither contrived nor formulaic. Life is not a bed of roses just because one has become a Christian. Instead, through countercultural narratives, let's project hope while being authentic. CGN TV is a satellite TV broadcast network established by a church in Seoul. Other than sermons, worship recordings, and daily devotionals, CGN has also embarked on producing K-drama series injected with biblical perspectives. The male lead in the web series, Church Opa's QT Romance, realizes that God loves him as he is, regardless of his lack of achievements. The mini-series, Go Go Song, presents a scenario common in most Asian cultures, that of the missing father, and offers healing. But one does not necessarily need to have the skill and resources to produce professional quality media in order to make an impact online. What we need is a good story. David and Esther, for example, on the left, post short snippets of their dating life and share tips on how to build a strong relationship in their TikTok page. Some of their clips have reached a few million viewers and their followers are invested in their love story, just as they would be for any K-drama. David shares the link to his personal Instagram page on this TikTok account, and many of their followers also go on to follow him 
on Instagram. Then on his Instagram page, he shares explicit Christian content and many followers would ask further questions about his faith, while some also seek advice or prayer from him. Melina is part of an Indonesian congregation in Singapore. She shares video clips of her church services and other events on TikTok. Although she does not have a huge following, within a short span of two months, more than 50 newcomers visited her church after viewing her posts. Most of them were pre-believing Indonesians working in Singapore who were looking for a community. And soon after, many of them were baptized by the church. Minecraft is a building game and some players intentionally have been creating cities based on biblical stories, then using these to disciple children who are Minecraft players. And trust me, there are a lot of children in Minecraft. In fact, there are more than 163 million players each month, and at least 20% of them are below 15 years old. So, what are the steps we could take? Those with interest or talent in producing digital media should get properly trained and keep up with the latest technology. They must also embark on a personal redemptive journey, pray and be led by the Holy Spirit and be grounded in the word. Instead of teaching young Christians to isolate themselves from popular culture, they should be encouraged to go into the world as Jesus did and engage redemptively with the culture. Of course, we must put our money where our mouth is and be willing to sponsor training and fund media projects. When we collectively raise our prophetic voice as learners, users, and producers of online media, we can then engage with those who are immersed in popular culture so as to redeem and transform the wider culture for God's glory. Most of what I have shared today is taken from this chapter in the book Arts Across Cultures, published by Regnum just last year. You will also find other chapters written by familiar names, such as Ian Collins, who I believe is in the room. Um, so yeah, do look out for this book uh, if you are interested. And thank you very much uh, for your attention. <laughs>